How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm going to be doing a cultural piece dedicated to Puerto Rico. It's going to be an outer sleeve cover-up and it's going to incorporate Los Tainos. Los Vejigantes. Cookies. Y La Garita. So with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go! Perfecto, vamos a checar si no tienes pelitos. So, ¿en qué año te hiciste el tatuaje? Oh, like 2003. 2003. 2003. Ya es tiempo. Sí. Ya es tiempo. Pero, you can see the eye. What happened? You can see the eye, right? The eye tanto? is like twitching. Oh, this one. This yeah, one. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Esto se lo hizo como así. It's like, dude, go like, go like, go like. <laughs> 20 years later. Yeah, let's go. That's it. Let's go. This is, this is it. This yeah, is the last is day. Uh, I'm going to be placing the stencil here on the arm. We're going to start with the... This is going to be a two-day session. First day, as in today, we're going to be doing the arm. Day two, we're going to be doing uh, the forearm. Number one thing to look out for is this bump here on the shoulder area. It is the muscle that's creating the bump and an, an indent and then coming down straight. So we got to be careful with that to make sure that the face doesn't land there because what's going to happen is that this is going to make the face a lot wider and chunkier uh, because of the perspective of the, the arm. So I want to make sure that this area lands around here. That way the nose of the Bejigante lands on this area and it gives it that three-dimensional look. So it's all about perspective. So there you go. I'm going to focus on the face because the Bejigante on the top, wherever it lands, is going to look nice. But I definitely want the face to land on a really good area. As far as the cover-up, it doesn't really matter where it lands because I designed it specifically to uh, be able to cover it up no matter where it lands. Oh, dang. Esta canción está pesada. Now relax your arm, Augusto. Oof. Oof. I know más. Check it out, make sure you like the placement. Hijo <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling, nervous? I'm good, bro. Excited? I'm good, excited, bro. <laughs> Let's go. What's the last time you got tattooed? Uh, I think 2010? 2010. Eight years, eight, 11 years. Just 13. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're all the same. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Se va a sentir igual yeah. que hace 13 años atrás. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Pero todo va a estar perfecto. Y más que nada, pues una pieza cultural. Lo más chido. ¿Cómo dicen chido? Como algo... Chido en Puerto Rico. Bien cabrón. Bien cabrón. Bien cabrón. <laughs> so I ended up customizing what it is here. It's, um, I ended up incorporating Tainos and Bejigantes in the same piece. That way I give it more meaning to the whole thing. As far as the cover-up, it's going to be an easy one. I don't see any, any, any areas that's going to give me trouble uh, because it is a very old tattoo. So... Uh, with the tones that I'm going to be using, I ended up, I ended up customizing it uh, to make sure that I had no problems covering it up. Uh, today's going to be the long day, tomorrow's going to be the, a lighter day. Uh, on the bottom here, I'm going to be doing uh, Koki and I'm going to be doing... Um, Garita. 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 Se me fue. Se. <laughs> Mucha información, mucha información. Garita del morro. Garita. También hay otra que se llama Garita del Diablo, ¿verdad? Sí. Garita del Diablo. Estaba mirando la, la historia de esa y dije, oh, ok. Ok, listo. Listo. Vámonos recio. Let's go, let's go. Vámonos recio. Eso es otro. Vámonos recio. <risa> <risa>
¡Qué mirá, bobo! Ah, ¡Qué mirá, bobo! Ah, ese video tan para, tierno. Para nosotros decirle bobo a alguien como es, es algo de los Eso no es ningún insulto. Para, eso, yo, para nosotros también, un bobo es algo como dorky. No Diga, yeah, dummy, nerdo, like dummy, like dummy. Yeah, dummy. No seas bobo. No seas bobo. <risa> <laughs> so now that I got the flow going, um, I already started doing um, the face area, the chin, the neck area. I, I wanted to get into a specific rhythm on how I wanted to approach the face. Now that I got it, the sequence that I'm using is uh, first applying, uh, mixing my brown and my black first, then slowly uh, mixing my brown with my lighter brown and uh, then I have my white and I just keep going back and forth, back and forth. So the sequence is going from my black, mixing it with my brown, my brown to my lightest brown, so I can make sure that I'm having like a smooth transition between the wrinkles and transitioning from the chin to the mouth to the nose and uh, making sure that I, that I can see the contrast because if I don't have the contrast on the face, it's gonna be hard to uh, separate the browns throughout the whole thing. Uh, so now, um, oh, and I'm using, I'm using my 14 round liner for the whole entire face. It's giving me the leverage to navigate nicely without irritating the skin and I'm able to add a few layers. So I'm using my 14 round liner with a voltage of a 5.0. And I'm gonna keep doing the same thing across the whole entire face because it's working for me. And yes, let's continue. Oh, I hate that song, I hate it. No puedo. Esta canción me molesta. No sé por qué. No sé por qué. Vamos a poner reggaetón pesado. Yeah. Eh, ah. Oh. Ay, Daddy Yankee, yo tengo que estar Daddy Yankee. Eso no es pesado. Eso no es pesado. Hazte caer. Pero ella me levantó. Y después me muere Daddy Yankee. Pero ella me levantó. <risa> So what I'm thinking with the, uh, this part of the piece is um, I'm going to be using my 14 round liner to start executing the eyes. All I did was add the black first just to kind of give me an idea of where the contrast is 
And then after that, uh, I would, um, I'm gonna be adding my darkest brown and create that shadow underneath the eye sockets and then on the side of the, the head just to give it that three-dimensional look and slowly start transitioning to my red because my red is gonna be my brightest, my brightest color in here. So I gotta make sure that I, I, I make that my priority color. I ended up, I'm gonna be using two different needles, two 14 round liners because one is gonna be for my black and my brown and I wanna keep the other 14 round liner clean so I can make sure I, I, I use it just for my red so I don't contaminate it with my brown or my black because I want it pure and I want it bright. <laughs> Ah, bueno. Hay que enseñarlo. Hay que enseñarlo. Seguro que lo hicimos. Ah, bueno. It's not crusty, no tiene nada. No, no sangró. Nothing, bro. Fucking perfect, bro. ¿Cómo dormiste anoche? Oh, good. Good. Gone. Well, no. No, no tan gone. Pero es el hotel. Nosotros estamos acostumbrados a dormir con el fan. Oh. So el hotel no se escucha ni madre y I'm like, it's too quiet. <laughs> Then we try to put the, the, the fan, uh -huh. like, on high. No, no, no. Nothing, dude. Huela el aroma de mi piel sobre tu piel. Canela, si estamos distanciados, mi alma se congela. Ah, uh, no. Don't like it. Okay, ahora sí. Uh. Venga. Venga, 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 venga. Esta es la buena. En donde muchos quieren llegar y no pueden. Esa es. Esta es la buena. Esta es la buena. Ahora sí tiene sentido. Ahora sí. Perfecto. Checate el espejo, verificar que a ti te gusta. Day number a la batalla una vez más. Day otra batalla. A la batalla. Day number two. Ya se armó. So here we are, second day. This is day two, and we're going to be doing the forearm area. And uh, on the bottom here, we have uh, the frog uh, Koki. So I'm going to be doing the bottom part first, uh, full color. Uh, we got Koki uh, holding on to a, to a leaf because the frog is literally super tiny, fits on your hand, extremely tiny animal. So that's why the, leaf, the leaves look extremely huge. So what I'm going to be doing is doing the green behind the, the frog. The color choice for this piece is going to be, uh, da, 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 da. I have yellow, ¿Qué? <laughs> Oak? Ocre? How do you pronounce that? A C H R E. Ocre. 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 Yellow oak. Oak. Ocre. Algo así. Yellow ocre. Looks like this. <laughs> The next one is um, bleach white. And the other one that I'm going to be using is. Um, Zorn Flesh Light and these three colors are by the brand of Revolution and I really like them because they're, they're, it's almost like oil painting with them. Um, 
and as far as the top I'm gonna be applying like an orange red yellowish uh, sunset and then we have um, La Garita here on the top uh, and I like the view that I picked because it reflects like the vision that I have is making it look like we're taking a photograph from the bottom point of view and capturing Koki and right in the background we have a Garita. I'm very excited for this. ¿Cómo te sientes? Oh good. Bro. Augusto. Go, Augusto. <laughs> Ready for war. Venga, venga, venga. I first started using my 14 round liner uh, just to kind of start testing out the area and start seeing how I was going to start packing in my, uh, my contrast um, and then I realized that my 14 round liner was a little bit too thick so I ended up switching to my 7 round liner to give me the sharpness that I was looking for and it is a really tight area so that is why I decided to switch to a 7 round liner with a, with a voltage of a 5.0. The process, the sequence that I ended up mixing my colors was starting mixing my solid brown with my black just to kind of give me that darker brown and slowly transitioning to my yellowish brown and ended up mixing it with my white just to give me all these different shades that I was trying to accomplish to make sure that I match the, my reference picture. As far as the belly area, I ended up doing, I ended up using my three one liner to create those uh, kind of scale looking uh, texture on the on the belly area and then switch to my seven one liner to pack in my colors moving on up with the face I did a seven one liner with a three one liner and continue doing the same sequence to make sure that I uh, made the whole thing look even and with a nice transition across the whole entire thing
This was a really fun project for me because you guys know I love culture, I love history, and I was able to put something original and unique together for my client. And my client was extremely happy. It was, he, was, he just had good vibes. He sat like a rock. The whole two days was just full of good vibes, you know? So it was a really fun weekend. And anything else? Nope. So if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope we were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.